They say never say never. I say never tell me what to do. A person will never put you in a position above them. That's never a lie. Always true. Success never comes without risk and risk never comes without fear. YouTube is a smoking mirror. Never how it appear. Hey, what up? This your boy Icewater815. Hey, I always wanted to do like some videos about what was the most challenging for me when I was getting my CDL. So that would be the pre-trip and the driving. Well, I really can't do too much about the driving because everybody going, when they take that test, they're going to drive how they want to drive. But as far as the pre-trip, I actually came across a good video on YouTube and I was like, man, why reinvent the wheel? You know what I'm saying? So... If y'all could do me a favor, man, anybody you know that's getting into trucking and trucking school, send them this video, man. I think it's a pretty good video and that uh, it'll make the pre-trip a lot easier if they watch this video over and over again, man. So uh, no comments on this one. If you, I'm going to leave a link to the uh, original page that I got the video from. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment on that. Appreciate it. I'm CDL. Pre-trip inspection for a Class A, Class A vehicle. And I'm going to start with my keys in my pocket. My wheels are chalk. And I'm going to start with the ID clearance lights at the top of the vehicle with my turn signal lights on my truck and on my trailer. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. And amber in color. Amber in the front, red to the rear, no condensation. My windshield is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No, no outdated stickers, no obstructions. The seal around the windshield is not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod afraid. The windshield wipers are flush to the windshield. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod afraid. My fender mirror, spot mirror, and flat mirror. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. My headlights are not cracked, not broken and secure free of condensation, clean and clear. My tag is securely mounted to the bumper with no outdated stickers, it's secure. The suspension is balanced. If it wasn't balanced, I'd place the vehicle out of service. No leaks of puddles or hanging wires or broken glass underneath the vehicle. If that, if that was such, I would put, place the vehicle out of service. All tires are properly inflated to the manufacturer's specification. Now, open up my hood, I'm going to the passenger side. on there. My radiator and the radiator hose. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks. The hose is not dry, rotted or frayed. Properly clamped. Bottom radiator hose go to the water pump. It's underneath the alternator. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose with some parts, no leaks. And it's belt driven. The alternator is also belt driven. It's not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose with some parts. The belt it's not cracked, not broken, and secure, and not dry, rod, and frayed. And it should have no more than three fourths of play. On this truck, I have the coolant reservoir is here, and the windshield washer fluid reservoir is here. Okay, they're not cracked, not broken, and secure, and no leaks, and they should read between the ad and the full mark. The Exhaust connects to the manifold and runs underneath the vehicle to the rear here. The exhaust is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. And if I had any leaks, it'll show black soot. My catwalk and my steps, they're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No legal wells, no loose or missing parts. Free of debris. My fuel tank is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. Cap is, is hand tight with the rubber seal and the metal chain. And the tank are he held up by metal and rubber straps. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. And no legal wells, not dry, rod, or free. Now I go to the passenger side. On the passenger side, I have three systems. The steering, braking, and suspension. And right now, we're gonna just get the loose parts. So right here is my Transmission dipstick, oil dipstick, air compressor, and power steering fluid reservoir, and the gearbox. And this hose right here 
goes to the stern pump. All of these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks. It should read between the ad and the full mark. The air compressor is gear driven. How I would check my, and the stern pump is gear driven. And how I would check my dipsticks, I pull them out, wipe them off, insert them back in, pull them back out, and they should read between the ad and the full mark. Now my stern system, system number one, stern shaft and my stern linkage. Stern shaft and stern linkage. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. Stern shaft should have no more than two inches of play. No debris wrapped around it. And the stern linkage is connected by castle nuts and cotter pins. Come on in and show that. Right here, castle nuts and cotter pins. Okay, system number two, braking system. My ABS line and brake hose, they're not cracked, not broken and secure. Not dry, rod afraid, no leaks. The brake drum, I'm sorry, the brake chamber is not cracked, not broken and secure, not dented, no leaks. And the push rod and slack adjuster. Push rod and slack adjuster is not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no, no loose or missing parts. When you pull on it by your hand, you should not be able to pull on it no more than one inch with the brakes release. Inside the wheel, right here, inside the wheel is the brake drum. It's not cracked, not broken and secure, and not dented. Inside the brake drum are your brake shoe liners. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, and not worn dangerously thin. System number three is the suspension. My leaf springs, my U-bolts, axle, hanger, hanger mounts, the frame, and a shock absorber. All of these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. They're not shifted or missing and no leaks from the shock absorber. Now, I'll go to my drive axle. On my drive axle, I have my braking system and my suspension. And I will inspect them the same way as I did in the front. The first, the brake system. The ABS line, the brake hose, the brake chamber, the push rod, slack adjuster, the brake drum, and the brake shoe lining. And I will inspect those parts the same way as I did in the front. The, the suspension, the leaf springs, the U-bolts, the axle, the hangers, the hanger mounts, the frame, shock absorber. I will inspect all those parts the same as I did in the front with the exception that I have a rubber bellow here the spacer, and the torque arm is in the middle. And these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal welds, and not dry rod or free, and no leaks. Now I go to my trailer axle. We come down here to the trailer axle. Trailer axle braking system parts and suspension parts. They're not, um, you have the braking system parts first. ABS line, the brake hose, the brake chamber, the push rod, slack adjuster, brake drum, and the brake shoe line. I will inspect these parts the same way as I did in the front. The suspension, the leaf springs, the U-bolts, the axle, the hangers, the hanger mounts, the shock absorber, the bellow, the spacer, and the torque arm. I will inspect all these parts as I did in the front. Now my front steering tire. My front steering tire is not cracked, not broken, and secure. And properly inflated to the manufacturer specification. It's not dry rod or free with no leaks. No cuts or bulges on the side walls. The tread is evenly worn. How I will check the tread is with the de trip, a tread depth gauge. How I would check the air pressure is with a rubber mallet or rubber or a air pressure gauge. The front stern tire should be no less than 432 in the front. Can that be recapped? All other tires can be recapped and they should be no less than 232 in tread depth. The tires in the rear on the drive axle and trailer axle, they should not be mismatched, nor should they be rubbing in the middle. My front steering rim is not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal welts. And on the drive axle and trailer axle, 
you have bud rims and I will inspect them the same way as I did in the front. With the exception, there should be no debris in the middle. All lug nuts on my steering axle, drive axle and trailer axle. All lug nuts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose and missing parts. If they were loose or, or missing, they would show rust or shininess. Now, all valve stems on my steering axle, drive axle and trailer axle. All, all valve stems are not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks with the metal cap. My oil hub is not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose and missing parts, no leaks. My drive axle and trailer axle, I will inspect them the same way as I did my oil hub with no leaks. Now, I'll close up my hood. Strap it down on the passenger side. Then strap it down on the driver's side. Strap it down. Now you at the driver's side door. My door, my driver's side door on my truck and on my trailers. They open and close properly. The hinges are not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose and missing parts. And my handrails, metal handrails. And the seal around it. The seal around the door is not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rod, or free. Now I would combine these parts. My handrails, my cable connector holder, my dummy cu coupling, and the drive shaft. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure, and no legal wells, no loose or missing parts. Now, and my air tanks, all right here, they're stacked, they're stacked on top of each other. So they one right here, one right here. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. And also my air tanks on my truck, my trailer. So my air tanks on my truck and trailer, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, and it drains daily free of condensation. Now my my airline and electric line connector box. On my truck and on my trailer, they're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No legal wells, no loose or missing parts. The lines, the electric line, the emergency line, and service line on my truck and on my trailer, they're not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rotten, or frayed, no leaks. The glad hands and electric connection on the truck and on the trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, no leaks, and not dry, rod or free from the bushings inside. Now, I drop down to my fifth wheel. Fifth wheel is properly greased, no gap, and it sits on the platform. This is the platform, platform has mounting bolts. And my release arm is in the lock position. And this means that my lock jaws are in the lock position around the kingpin and the kingpin securely mounted to the apron. And all of these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. Okay. Now, my mud, my mud guards and mud flap. They're on my truck and on my trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, and not dry, rod afraid, and not dragging. The DLT tape on my truck and on my trailer, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, clean and clear. The rear brake lights on my truck are red in color. The reverse light is white in color. On my truck and on my trailer. The turn signal, the left turn signal, and the right turn signal and the four-way flashing. All of these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No condensation. Now I have clearance of three, zero, three of clearance. Now, my header board. The header board is not cracked, not broken and secure. Strong enough for cargo not to crash through. Come on in. Now, the skirt. 
And my landing gear. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. The landing gear pad is in the raised position. And my crank is in the lock position. And all these parts are not cracked, not broken, and secure. No legal welds, no loose and missing parts. The frame of my trailer and the deck. Come on down. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no loose and missing parts, no holes in my deck. My ABS light is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation and amber in color. Now swing around. I already got my ID clearance lights, my turn signal lights, my brake lights, four-way flash. They're red in color. Tag light is white in color. All these parts are not cracked, not broken, and secure and no condensation. My tag is securely mounted with no outdated stickers. The DOT bumper is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no loose and missing parts. Now I will tell the DLA to send them this way. I will enter the vehicle with three points of contact. Follow me. So you're gonna get in with three points of contact. So I will climb in, three points of contact. The first thing I want to do is put my seat belt on. My seat and my seat belt properly locks. My belt is not free. My mirrors are adjusted for me. I take my key, use a safe start. I just turn it, turn the gauges on and use a safe start. My ABS light went out, it properly works. So now I'm gonna turn the vehicle on, build up my air pressure. Now I'm gonna start with my turn signal lights here. So my left turn signal indicator, my right turn signal indicator properly work. And my four way flashers properly work. I turn my light on, my, my high beam indicator properly works. Now I turn all that off. Now, my windshield wipers, turn them on, they're flush to the windshield. Well, by being that the window is wet, I just show that they properly are secured to the windshield. Now, my city horn, air horn, they properly work. My steering wheel should have no more than two inches of play or 10 degrees of play, whatever one you choose to say. Now, my gauges, the trans gauge you don't have to mention, but the temperature gauge, that's it, it'll say water. It rises when the vehicle warms up. If you reach this 250 or 260, you wanna place the vehicle out of service. And the oil pressure gauge should reach between five and 20 when idle. They probably work. Tachometer and the speedometer properly work. My voltmeter is here. It should read between 12 and 14. The fuel, it should be half the full, properly work. My air gauges, they reach the governor cutout rate. They properly work. Now, my vents, you want to turn the vent on to the defrost and the feet. Level. So we turn that on, make sure that you turn it to the heat, turn the vent on, and you fill at the top, you fill down the bottom, okay? Then you turn the vent on. Turn the vent on, you fill the vent, they blow, they properly work. Now turn that off. Now my emergency equipment is right here. So my three, I have my ABC fully charged fire extinguisher, three reflective triangles and spare fuses, all right here, okay, in this box. And they're secured. Now, now I'm ready to perform my air brake test. So now, what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna perform my parking brake test, AKA tug test. So, I'm gonna push in the parking brake, put my vehicle in drive, and tug against the trailer brake first, starting now. Vehicle and drive. 
Tap my accelerator. My, my trailer brake probably helped. It probably worked. Now I'm going to push in my, I pulled, I pulled, I pulled out the parking brake and the trailer brake. Now the park, I'm in drive, tap it, accelerator, the parking brake held, it properly worked. Now what I'm going to do next is pull the parking, the, pull the trailer brake out. The parking brake is already out. Put the vehicle in neutral. Now, for my, I'm gonna explain my service brake test. For my service brake test, I will put my vehicle in drive, drive five miles an hour forward, apply the service brake, and it should not pull to the left or pull to the right. No unusual feeling. Now, I'm gonna do three things. Put three fingers up. And these three fingers represent that I'm gonna turn the truck off. One, two, turn the key on so my dash lights up. And three, push in my parking brakes and trailer brakes. Starting now. Turn the truck off. One, two, turn the key on so my dash lights up. If, if the dash doesn't light up, you didn't do something right. Now, three, push in the parking brake, push in the trailer brake. Let the air settle. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold my service brake down for one minute, and I should not lose no more than four PSI within that minute. And I'm gonna find a starting point. I'm gonna start now. And I'm gonna hold this brake down, all the way down. And I'm looking at my gauges to make sure that I do not lose no more than four PSI. Twenty five seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. One minute. I did not lose no more than four PSI. It probably works. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fan my brakes down to 60 PSI and my low air pressure indicator and buzzer should come on. And then I will continue to fan my, my gauges down to 40 to 20 PSI and the brakes that I pushed in should pop out starting now. So looking here my gauges came on they probably work now i'm looking at my my parking brake and trailer brake they both popped out they probably work now i'm going to turn my truck off turn the key off take the key out and proceed with checking all my lights now also speaking of lights my interior light probably work that's an extra point so now i should have enough points right now for, the, for my pre-trip inspection. And you wanna ask, do I have enough points? The DLA probably would tell you that you have enough points uh, because checking the lights, that's only one point. So if you are short, then you wanna ask the DLA in what area would you might be short. But if you followed this video, you should be A1. This is the greatest pre-trip. CDL Book Club is where you get CDL mine. Been through a lot of pain in my life and I pray the Lord take it all away.